And let me just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, we have a quorum. Good morning, everyone. Seeing that we have a quorum of the elementary school building committee, and that is the meeting that we're in today, I want to make sure that everyone can hear and be heard. And um, just before we started the recording, I told I, I told the members who were on that we're going to try to be very efficient with time because several people have to leave before 10 for an event that's happening on the town commons. So, um, Mike, I'm, I'm just going to call out names as I hear see them to make sure you can see and be heard. heard. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, Jonathan. Good morning. Phoebe. Hello. Hi, Paul. Present. Ben. I uh, too am present. Sean. Here. Simone. Here. And as others join us, I will make sure we uh, recognize them. So I'm going to turn it over. Um, I don't see Margaret, actually. Oh, there's Margaret. Margaret, I'm going to turn it over to you to just put the agenda up. Um, and then we will uh, swing into the meeting where I give back my control as chair to, to whomever wants to take it. <laughs> OK, can everybody see this? Yes. Um, so it's a brief agenda, um, although I think a couple of these items have some discussion. Um, we're going to start out <clears throat> with a talk, a discussion about agenda and timeline, because um, the consultants, myself and Denisco, have a recommendation about a modification to the overall timeline for the submission that we're working towards right now. Uh, Denisco is going to give an update on um, the design as it is evolving. And then we're going to talk about um, the search for uh, an alternative time for this meeting and whether that is appropriate. So Kathy, in terms of votes, I think, are you, you want to take a vote on the, the poll today? Um, yeah, I, I'll report on it. It, it yes. Um, just on a, we, we don't have a date that we don't lose a lot of people. So I, I, I don't know whether it's a vote or not, Margaret, but okay. the design time, the de design timeline, I think we have to agree that, because um, it's a shift in what you had proposed before. Okay. Well, and I think when you wrote this timeline, you had us looking at the, at the date after the design update. So you want to do it that in that sequence? Um, Yes, let's let's do okay. design update because I want to make sure that um, people are here for that discussion. Um, okay, so then I'm going to turn it over to Denisco and we'll catch up on the timeline after their presentation. <clears throat> okay, well then. Uh... I will uh, share my screen and we're going to talk about updates that we've been working on in the plan and the elevation studies and the massing as we shared it last week. Um, starting with the plans, the substantial changes uh, that we've made since we've last presented to the entire committee. Um, we've had some good meetings with uh, the music staff within the school and the administration. Um, we've realized there are significant storage needs and for the music program. So we've introduced some storage space between the practice rooms and the stage, which will also be used by the music program. So that's slightly different. And the practice rooms will no longer be accessed directly from the music room, but from the area behind the stage where the storage is, because um, we've learned that there are multiple music programs, including a band, an orchestra, a choral, and general music education. So this just um, allows the students to be served in more different flexible ways. We also had some good conversations with the administrative staff about how they work and we've reorganized this suite so that the secretaries can both do their job, maintain control over who enters and exits the building and still have clear access to the offices within the suite. And, and this is an evolving design, which we will have to um, 
go through. Moving up through the building, there have been minor shifts that we can talk about, um, basically to get the massing to work a little bit better. And as we move a little bit further along in the presentation, you'll be able to see these shifts from the outside. The library has moved a little bit. The seminar room are moving around just to get the square footages and the overall shape of the building to just work in um, ways that work for both the plan and the look of the building from the outside. The same is true of the third floor. We're just pushing and pulling a little bit, mostly on the west side over the entrance of the building um, to get the massing and the mechanical um, systems that we're beginning to put into the design to work. We are also um, continuing to look at the site plan in tandem, and we have a meeting next week with um, Gilbert and Rupert and other people in town just to review progress and get input. Um, I just want to show you some of the things that we're looking at. Uh, one is extending the southern drop off loop to maximize um, the queuing space that just to be sure that all uh, queuing and uh, drop off traffic happens on site and doesn't conflict with anything on Southeast Street. Um, we also have to find locations for service vehicles and van parking and drop off. Um, it's shown right here at the end of the southern loop, but that may not be the best location, so we are continuing to look at it. We are also looking at adjusting the athletic fields that are on site. This shows the softball field rotated from the last version that was presented. Um, there are a couple of reasons. One, to get it to work better with the playground, possibly another is we've moved the direction of hitting softballs away from the PV panels that will be in the parking lot. Um, the distances and the likelihood all have to be worked out, but it's uh, something, uh, a problem we'd like to avoid if possible. Tim, could I just also um, mention that we had a really great conversation about outdoor learning and we're starting to really pull that together. It's really exciting. So maybe next building committee, we can share a little bit more about that. Um, also want to talk about elevation studies as, as we're working with Thornton Tomasetti to, uh, in a quantifiable way, uh, determine the best daylighting solutions for the classrooms. We are working with them to model several options of the classroom fenestration to see which will provide optimal daylight the deepest into the room. Uh, which will provide the best glare free light. Um, you can see a couple options here with um, punched openings, the height of the classroom evenly distributed. We have other options where there is a band of glazing high that um, doesn't allow you to see out, but it allows light deeper into the room uh, with light shelves on some options to prevent glare. Um, and then the vision glass it, it is collected to one side or the other. And with Thornton Tomasetti, we'll be able to evaluate what that does in terms of direct light and glare on teaching walls, uh, if one would be better than the other. Um, and so we've, with them, we are modeling several options and we will come back to you with the results of that process so you can truly evaluate which glazing organization is gonna give the best environment in the classroom for learning and for general comfort. But we are going through multiple options, um, including the location, height, size of the windows on the exterior walls. Plus, uh, we have some flexibility to manipulate the ceiling plane within the classrooms, which will allow us to get light deeper into the room. Um, these sections show pushing the ceiling up at the perimeter, uh, which we are allowed to do because the mechanical systems typically come about two thirds and we are working with our engineers to locate all of these systems. And now I'm actually gonna switch to um, some up some Kathy, you have your hand up. 
No, you can you can be switching. I'm just going to ask ask a question, make a comment. Um, that I know the the daylighting interacts also with the twenty four percent window on the and sustainability. So, um, the question is: at some point after you do this modeling, will you want to reconvene? I'll call it the sustainability committee, the net zero committee, you know, to bring this back all back together. So we, you've got sort of a, how we're modeling the school design, the internal classroom just on a, we don't have it scheduled. So I just want to make sure we get it on a schedule somewhere. No, nope, uh, absolutely. We will want to, we are currently modeling the glazing percentage in the classrooms at about 30%, which is higher than the overall building average. So you know, we may need to adjust that or we may need to make decisions about other spaces in the building, what we want to be, um, what, where we want to use those, that glazing opportunity. So absolutely, we will want to schedule that when we get the results back from, or in advance of throwing time setting. I see Mike's hands up also. Just briefly, um, um, you know, I just, I, I appreciate the work. I appreciate the meeting that was last Friday with the subcommittee and walking you know, and I think the shifting the softball field makes sense. I think the only thing I caution I want to have is I think we we still need to work to define where kids are playing at recess, what's used, because if you look at where the community softball is now, the, right, the fence is in a better position, but now the, the infield, which is not grass, takes up a significant portion of that area closest to where the school is. And so, um, right, I, I'm not against softball. I, got blamed for that once last week and it's not uh it's not an accurate assessment uh but i, I just I, i'm really thinking about kids and and recess and making sure that the green space and if they're going to use the green space to the east of the school cool you know that 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 resolves it i mean you know one might wonder that's a lot of green space to not be used in the north but you know i think just we'll, we'll need to have more conversations not necessarily today about that because I, I think there's competing interests and demands and finite amount of space and um, it's just a caution and a concern that I, I don't want to have a beautiful new school and one of the reasons we chose it is green space for for outdoor learning as Donna said and uh, for play space but then actually not have the sufficient play space to what 575 students need so no nope. comment not a question just something we're going to come back to but I, I'm going to keep on banging that drum because it's a major concern of mine no nope. but it is worthy comment and everything that you've seen is still moving and and we are well aware that this is a school project and, and it is a school first. So we just, you know, not to answer, but just to say that that is foremost in our mind. Um, Paul? Yeah, I just want to add on two things. One is um, on the field, a uh, comment was made to me by a coach of sports that grouping this the outdoor field space into one area gave a lot more flexibility in order to, in terms of like ultimate Frisbee and things like that, as opposed to just organizing it around softball. I think our goal should be to maximize flexibility of all the spaces that we have. And the second, um, in terms of, uh, uh, as you start to look at the windows, I know there are, it's, it's interesting. There's so many things you have to take into account. One is the indoor, the impact on the indoor, the the light and all that stuff, but also the sort of window fenestration on the building and what that looks like from the outside um, and what that how that fits into your design model. So. Um, Good luck with that. Uh, that's actually a perfect segue to where we are going right now. <laughs> uh, let me pull up what I intended to. So um, I'm going to share uh, a few videos that we talked about in the subcommittee last week. Um, um, they are varied in terms of their approach, in terms of use of material um, designed to inspire conversation. Um, everything that you're seeing is um, flexible. Uh, some are a little bit more traditional, some are less so. Um, but we had a very productive uh, discussion last week and I'm sure we will again next week as we um, you know, learn more about what you would like to see on the project and how we can balance all of those uh, very needs you're talking about. But this is a view um, from the north side of the building of one option. Um, it's a mostly masonry material. Um, 
we, we had a discussion about the colors available in brick and they there are almost as many as you could think of um, but this shows a a sort of neutral uh palette with accents of color around the windows and entrances tim um maybe what you can do is also talk about what the spaces are just so people can orient themselves a little mm -hmm. bit Sure. Um, as we move around the building on the left side, this is the academic wing, uh, the repetition of three punched windows. For the most part, each one of those is a classroom um, where you see the projection here. That's kindergarten classrooms, which are a little bit larger, so they come out. Um, as we move a little to the right, um, you are getting to the library on the second floor and the cafeteria on the first and the music room. So those are uh, frequently uh, occupied by a large group. So we've used a bit more glazing in those spaces. And you can see as we um, walk around the building, some of them have entrances, uh, particularly the cafeteria. Um, so this is one of the options that we studied after we met with you all last time. We, we took a look at one of our initial um, design studies was a sloped um, roof on a few of these elements. And one of our priorities is really to develop the front entrance in a way so that it's recognizable and really as you drive up, um, really defines the building. So that was really important to us. So we, we looked at this as a flat roof option after we met with you and then um, also developed a sloped roof option. and. You'll see Tim will present a hybrid option, which is the result of many great comments that we received last week. And you know, we we also want you to provide some feedback too, some honest feedback. And what we tell folks is, you know, we we have really thick skin. We don't we won't you won't hurt our feelings if you just tell us honestly how you feel. We're really okay with it because. This is really an opportunity to get as many um, feedback comments as possible. And as you look at these options, we we don't want you to be hung up on colors. Um, as Tim said, there are so many colors of brick and other masonry units. We're using color to convey kind of uh, the depth of color maybe, but I think what we wanna do is look at using some neutral palettes so that we can bring bright colors in and make the building a little bit more playful. So sorry to interrupt Tim. You can no, Paul lateral. Yeah, I think well, I think Paul, Paul had a oh his, Paul, yeah. sorry. Uh, with this option, we're just gonna continue around the building. I, Paul, to... sorry, did you have something, Paul? No, that was, that was residual hand. Sorry. Okay, okay. Uh, this is this would be the view as you approach the site from the southern entrance um, administration. Uh, I'll lower volume here a clear present entrance, uh, the gym volume in the background, and then you can see a hint of the three-story building beyond. But the way the program um, is lopsided toward the first floor um, with the large height elements to the west, it really gives us an opportunity to manipulate the mass to um, do things that speak to entrance and breaking down the scale of the building. And Tim, um, I, maybe you can pause for a second. Um, I'm not sure if the canopies have been introduced yet for shelter for students as they exit the building and things like that. So, yep. Um, so we are looking at sort of applied exterior canopies and canopies that are integrated with the building. We're going to look at a few options today, but this um, probably has the smallest canopy of all of them. And it's just a little bit of cover as you, in this option, actually the doors are facing north and south um, towards the um, different drop-off loops um, rather than directly west. Um, and so in the other options, the doors face west and are, are visible, but you know will require you to come down and, and turn into the building. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, um, Tim, as you and Vivian, as you rotate, because I was, saw some of these last week, um, you might, I know you're going to show us the slant roof, but some of it was opportunities to add color 
like a, a metal plate that's a bright yellow, blue, whatever color we want. Um, you've shown some of it, but we can also do that. You said we can do that at the front of the building selectively. Mm -hmm. And then I think this gym view is different than the gym view you showed us where you had a mural on the side of the gym that you'd be seeing. So um, I just want, you know, one of the terrific things of this rotation that we saw last week is this adding of selective colors um, that breaks up the scale of the building, but also makes it look more elementary. So that was, to me, really exciting to be seeing that. And Paul, you're thinking about what do the windows look like? We were also told we don't have to have the same windows on the south side that we have on the north side if there's, if there's a reason to vary that because of the sun coming in or need for more light. So... Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'll just stop there because it, I, it, it's, it, I saw these a week ago um, and we'll see the slant group. And, yep. and then just the only other thing is that this multiple flat roof that you were showing, if you could speak to, is that, does that introduce expense compared to the uh, oblique line, the, the simpler one that's the slant roof? as you're, you're showing us these uh, choices? Um, complexity in general does introduce expense, but we uh, are, are very good at designing to budgets and we're not gonna present anything that is, um, you know, introduces undue cost into the project. Um, they, they all come with uh, different details, different expenses, but, um, we are presenting these as different options in terms of design, not as this is the expensive one and this is the more moderately priced one. Also, you'll see um, in, in our next iteration, we are also needing to balance where rooftop equipment goes. So there will be a balance of some more flat roofs with even when we're doing the slope roof option. So um, there's a need still for some of the lower roofs here and there. And then of course, we will have solar design look at which has the most optimum or maximum solar on the roof. Yep. So here is the start of another option with a view as you approach the site from the southern entrance of um, the administration as a sloped roof um, to sort of accentuate where the entrance is at the north side of that volume. And here's a canopy that's also integrated into the building that's a little bit larger. Um, here is uh, the gym. Um, and we have another view that we can look at later that uh, Kathy alluded to that there's an opportunity for colorful architectural elements, perhaps art, perhaps signage, uh, but it is, uh, could be thought of as a canvas to present the identity of the school. Um, this shows a sort of warmer, more traditional brick color, um, but um, you should think about all of these colors as uh, placeholders, representations of volumes, and then as we get into the material palette selection, we can Uh, make those decisions as we move forward. Um, coming to the north side of the building, you can see, again, there is a lot of glass in the library and the cafeteria and the music room. Um, this has a more even uh, representation of color on the classroom wing, um, sort of one color that other than the third floor, we, we've changed the material. Um, we'll swing around to the south side where it's a little bit brighter. This is I was going to say, shadow. this must be a certain time of day, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're working on getting all the views to be reflect reflective of the same time of day. But you can see here, there's clear story glass into the lobby, which will create a um, very well lit space that the majority of the students enter through and exit every day. Shot at the gym, separating them. So here's more traditional approach to classroom windows, a series of punched openings. Um, 
without the accents that you saw on one of the other or the first option. So as we continue to develop the design of this building, we're going to be looking at ways to break up the scale of the academic, the three-story portion of the school. And this is just one way of doing it, right? By changing out the material or at least the coloration of the third story, it kind of lightens it up so it doesn't really feel like this big heavy masonry building. There, there are different ways that we're going to um, treat that to try to achieve that. Angelica, do you have your hand up? It's hiding behind uh, the case. Yes, um, so um, I just was wondering, I know last time we talked about in the cafeteria how to integrate more of an outdoor space given that students uh, really need to have sort of that, um, not just during the pandemic, but afterwards be able to have the benches and you know the tables and things like that. And I just was wondering if you could go back to how it looked like, because my concern is that there might not be enough space in the front where the cafeteria is located. And the cafeteria seems kind of like, um, yeah, there's not enough green space there. And, and, and I, I'm not sure, I only see a small door. I don't see anything else where, where kids can come outside and have their lunches. And that's something that's become part of the culture at Fort River already. So I'm wondering, um, given that we talked about what would that would look like, so we talked about last. Um, we, we have definitely heard what you're saying from both pretty much everyone in the school that uh, outdoor eating lunch integration of the playground um, is critically important. Um, these massing models, uh, elevations and drawings that you're looking at right now are really um, to refine the composition of the whole building where we're going to be using glass and solid, but there was certainly a lot of time and effort that will be spent on making sure that those doors uh, to the playground are in the right place so that everything flows as it will. Um, as you can see here in one of the options, the playground is real is represented as a, a beige plane. So the detail is, is not there yet. Um, some of the plans show the doors to the um, cafeteria from the playground right where my cursor is where you can see that and it's not rendered in this uh, option like a, a lot of the doors to the exterior are not and others have it at this side which when we get to that stage there will certainly be a sidewalk up to it if it's, it's determined that the door wants to be on that side because that's the cafeteria is a collection point for drop off and dismissal um, I mean, I guess that's a, a long way to say we, we have heard all of those concerns and we are working them to the design, but, um, you know, all of those details are not there yet. Angela's hand, Angelica, is your hand still up? Uh, yeah, just a quick follow up. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate that clarification. It's just my question was also about just looking at these schematics and um, even with the details added of that green space, it seems like there's just still, I worry that there might not be enough room. And if the cafeteria were, say, on the other side where the gym is, I mean, just I, I would love to hear about why, why one side versus the other, given that in the other side, the back side, there's just a lot more space. Um, I know how the school looks like now, and I'm just still trying to visualize how how much space students would have, given that also that's the drop off and there's a lot of car car movements that at certain times. And so it just um, was wondering whether maybe in the back where the I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure the gym is in the back because it's facing the fields, but I just wanted to hear a little bit more about the choice of the cafeteria in the front. Tim, um, Tim, maybe you can pull up a yeah, I'm gonna, site plan. I'm going to do site plan, yeah. Actually, the cafeteria, Angelica, the cafeteria is going to face the playing fields. Um, oh, I will. Okay. Yeah, it's it, they moved it. They moved it because the where the gym is is where that bus drop off loop would be. So if the cafeteria were there, there wouldn't be. Um, you have to put the yeah. So the cafeteria is where Tim's little cursor is. Now, Tim, can you zoom in a little bit? Yeah, we, we felt it was important that the cafeteria related to the play areas. And so it is facing the great open space. And as Tim said, we are continuing to develop the site design. And now that we've received some really great feedback regarding outdoor learning, we're gonna um, take, um, we're gonna fold that in as we develop the design for the the rest of the play area and particularly the area outside the cafeteria. 
So, so what you're also not seeing, actually, this area is is quite large. It's mm -hmm. it's really large. Um, right. it, it's hard to um, really understand that right now. But what you're also you're not seeing play equipment. You're not seeing basketball nets. So, so um, I guess Angelica, we, we've 100 heard you and everyone else, and we'll just ask. We're, we're just simultaneously doing a bunch of things. So yeah. it, it just might not be 100% developed yet, but right. it's not lost. So so we've got you. And, and we'll, we'll swing back to that um, as, as we get all of the input to the site. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so this option is one of the other ones that we saw last week. Um, it has a slightly uh, different approach to the classroom wing. The overall elevation is broken up a bit more with change of materials and the window fenestration is uh, a little bit different. Um, one of the bigger, but perhaps more subtle um, changes in this option is that it takes the program area on the north side of the lobby and the main circulation and angles it uh, and it might, it might even be too subtle to see in this view but the library cafeteria and music room are rotated about 10 degrees so that they face the uh, drop-off drive um, you know, that was sort of an investigation to, we know that it's a concern that the building have some presence and identity as you enter the building. Um, but, uh, and it's something that we're still looking at, but um, it, it may not be worth it in terms of potentially extra space added to the building or, but here is, a version that we've developed in the past week based on some feedback that we received last week. Um, one, the canopy needed to be larger. Um, we've introduced some color here so that it would pop and mark the entrance. Um, we've articulated the gym a bit with some changes in materials. Um, we've also introduced some signage that may add an opportunity for color adjusted the glazing at the lobby just to make sure that it is a light filled space. Um, and then still, this is a, a work in progress and we are looking for your comments and but we're going to go back uh, and, and really dig into the details and, and have a lengthy conversation with the uh, working group next Friday. You can also see here that as Vivian mentioned, there are mechanical systems that need to be integrated into the building. Um, this version, uh, as opposed to the last with the slope roof, has a screen wall around the mechanical equipment that will serve the administration suite, the gym, and the library. And that is all behind this wall right here. Tim, do you, you have a version with the mural on the... Jim, well, I do, uh, and okay. I can pull that just, in. No, no, that's okay. Just because people were pretty excited about that. Yeah. And we know your buses won't have signage unless that's one way to <laughs> obtain revenue. <laughs> um, so here we come around to the north side of the building with um, pops of color introduced into the classroom. Um, combined with the massing of the slope roof and the lobby entrance. Um, this is very similar, a, a single splash of color at each window or one at each classroom. Cool. And then we're gonna, what another thing this option does is sort of explore the idea of changing the fenestration on the north side of the building and the south side of the building. So as we sort of orbit around to the south, you can see that we've introduced even more color. And we're
So I think as Vivian was saying, you know, we're looking for reactions or comments um, intentionally. And, and we have them, <laughs> so Kathy. Um, why, why don't I let um, Paul and Jonathan go first um, since I spoke earlier. I'm letting Jonathan go first since he's the architect. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you really don't need to. I, I, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with uh, waiting, um, especially since Paul, I, I got to, to see some of this, not this, mm -hmm. this piece uh, last week, so that they get to hear from me a little bit already. But since I'm talking, um, I, I do like these pops of color. Uh, in my head, though, if as you were spinning, I was thinking it would be kind of interesting to see what it would look like if there was a fairly different treatment from the north on the north and the south sides. Um, and I would actually think of almost swapping them because the north side will always be a little bit more shadowy and having pops of color on that north side to kind of enliven it um, to me is something that would be interesting to explore. Um, but I like the way I like the, the way this kind of pops. I like the, you know, how the, the color kind of interacts with the neutral tone. So, um, and maybe both sides should be the same, but it was, it was just something that was happening in my head and you turned it around and look at that. There was something different on one side from the, than the other. Um, because I think in, in, in my head, I'm kind of imagining that the kids are going to spend more time outside on that North side, because that's where the main play space is. Obviously they will spend some time out here and plenty of people will see this side. So I wouldn't want it to be, um, completely kind of, uh, uh, you know, not have an expression to it, but um, if we were to do some variance, that would be my thought. The, the other thing is it's, you know, we are showing you from a bird's eye view so that you can really understand the full massing and what maybe what we can do next time is also do it from how people would be perceiving this from the ground, because I think, um, it, it might be a totally different experience, but this just helps you see all of the um, articulation in the building. Where you might, yeah, you might yeah. not see it otherwise, but okay, Paul, you can you? <laughs> okay, thank you. So I have two general comments. One, one is, um, I, I think I would like the, the colors that you use to give be cues on two things. One is what's inside the building. So they, you know, you say, so it might tell you what's, what's, what things are. And the other is like, if you're outside the building and you're saying, a lot of times people will say, oh, you walk over to the red doors. That's, how do you get into the gym? Uh, you say, oh, go to the, go to where the red is or, or go where blue is, whatever the color is. And I think using um, color, you know, <clears throat> especially dynamic colors as a cue for where you should be gathering if someone says that we're going to be meeting outside the, the cafeteria and you have new people there or kids they they will associate you know versus words they'll say go to the orange area or something like that so i would think and i think the you know i think you know some people use the out the colors on the outside to indicate what's inside um so you can say anytime anywhere there's a yellow there's that means it's a classroom or something like that um so that's one. And the other thing is, um, I really wonder if there's a way, uh, sort of a primary experience for many parents and then students as well is going through the front door of the building. And um, the schools where my kids have been, when it's been sort of either um, west or north facing, it's always been shady and dark. And I think what I would want with a new school is to say, it's bright and sunny. And I think that sort of mandates a Southern exposure. We can't get an East exposure, obviously on this for, you know, morning sun brightening, you know, bringing it into the day. But I, I was um, wondering if there's a way to, uh, maybe it, it isn't, but to sort of jut it out or do something where it captures more sun at that entrance, both because there's a lot of, you know, a lot of times you're waiting for a parent pickup or your after school or something somebody's waiting outside the front door and having it be in the sun in this climate with the option for shade um i i just i think trying to utilize sun sun to um make the building more welcoming would be a, a benefit to us 
I, I understood, Paul, and, and we're studying the impact of the sun um, as, as it impacts the in, inside as well, right? Yeah. So um, the, the primary is, nor, is the north-south exposures to the classrooms, which obviously are the most important. And then all of, again, it, and, and what you're going to hear multiple times is there's mutually exclusive needs or requirements at the front, right? So we need canopies for shade and awning and, and for inclement weather while the students gather outside. But as a result of that, what you're seeing is shade at certain times of the day. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've been working with Thornton Tomasetti and they're doing the study of having this beautiful glazing to bring natural light into the building, but yet this is on the west side. So that's the hardest to control. So yeah. how do you manage that, right? So um, we're studying all of that and, and just we've got to find that, that right balance for, for all of the um, needs. And, and I don't remember what was on the east side of the building. Is there a way to sort of capture light coming in in the morning to flow through the building? It's it's just the other end of the academic wing, right? So mm -hmm. the west side is the entrance, <laughs> north south. Right. Are, the is, are there windows back there? Yeah, it's uh, the stairwell, right? It's the okay. glass stairwell, but um, yeah, there which are is windows also important on the east side of the building, and that light will be used to, um, you know, bring light into the circulation and the classroom. But it is a, a bit remote to like the lobby. But this option and the other, um, the one with the flat roof had uh, clear stories facing south in the lobby, which would allow the lobby to be very bright, even if it's a west facing elevation. And so there, we're, we're still looking at everything and possibly, you know, bringing together, you know, the best aspects of both options. So, and we've also done canopies with skylights in them. So to, to mm -hmm you know, as you are on the west side, even though the sun will be behind the building if you're approaching at 8 a.m., yep. um, we're, we're going to make it as light-filled as possible. Okay, thank you. Kathy? Next. Um, so I had a, it just, a, I wanted to, since we have more of a group, a larger group here than last time, when we saw this last week, many, quite a few of us, and Mike's here, he can speak for himself. We liked the slanted roof um, because it broke up the lines and it really made the school look different. Uh, different. Um, you know, it was, and it was kind of simpler than the flat roofs. So I don't know whether you need, like, does everyone like that? Uh, so if you keep working with this should we stay with this this is a question or do you want to keep carrying the the flat roof version and the slanted so then my other question about the slanted is is the slant does that allow you <gasps> when you put solar canopies there to be you know i've got a barn roof with solar canopies on it and my roof slant slants just about right for the can for the solar you know so they didn't have to put erect something else. They had to hold the solar up, but they didn't have to create a big tall thing. So I, I had a question about the, the one slant, but then the gym you've got slanted in the other direction. Um, and I wasn't sure why um, it's slanted because it's, uh, uh, because then you would, if you put solar canopies on the gym, you'd have you'd have to stand them up um, to get the light. So it was just a question on the the, the slopes um, and why why not have the gym also slope and maybe you know I don't even know what that might look like. So th those are one of my questions because I like this better than the flat roof. And I'll stop talking because Mike's hand went up too because I think Mike you liked the slope better too, correct? So it was just a question about the sloping. Um, to just to quickly answer the question, uh, in this view, the gym roof is actually represented flat. Um, you know, okay. the, the angles might throw that off. Um, we are, you know, sort of looking at another where the gym roof slope would be similar to the administration part, but we would not slope it to the north. To okay, thank you. Solar, Mike. 
Yeah, and I'll just add uh, briefly what Kathy said. One of the reasons, at least for me, and I think there were other people in our group who agreed uh, last Friday that the slope on the front is that one of the concerns we had, I think, at this group um, was made, I think Paul made a very thoughtful comment a while back about making sure you knew where the front of the building was because of the orientation. And there was a lot of dialogue, as I recall, about that. And, and the slope in the front, for me, makes it much more clear, this is where you go in, this is where you walk, whereas the sort of boxy front looks not wildly different than the sides or the back. And, you know, so I think, I think it looks better, but aesthetically, but for me, it's much more about wayfinding uh, and making sure that there's uh, less confusion about where to enter the building, particularly as it's a new building and it's oriented sort of deeper instead of wider uh, as our current building is. So just, just adding that to the conversation from our, our discussion last Friday. Paul? And Kathy, I wonder if we should do a time check because we do have to make well, at least one decision or maybe two before I think Mike, Mike's sure. the only one who'll be leaving. So I'm not sure much how much longer we're going to spend on this, but. Okay, uh, I just wanted everyone to see, uh, Paul, we will, but this was um, an eye-catching example of what we could do with a mural. And that happens to be the mural that's currently on Fort River where they they superimposed it. So um, I wanted to make sure, I, I don't see, Tammy's not here today, but I wanted to make sure that people saw there were ways of, to the extent we wanted to, that we can bring things that currently speak of the school to people to this. And this was an example of what Vivian and Rick and Tim and others had done. Um, so, Tim, you know, does this is with this, if we did a mural there, does it get painted on? Does it, you know, so it's like what what would what would the choices be of and I know we've that's a whole separate discussion, but I get it, getting it goes, art to last 50 years is an exercise in itself. So it would probably want to be something more durable than paint. And so we would have the discussion um, whether that uh, percent for art or whatever percentage it is or speaks to a mural made out of tile. Maybe it's a made out of architectural materials. You can do a mosaic with brick. It's been done. That's not something you know we suggest, but um, something that would be worthy of the canvas that it's put on and would last the life of the building is a discussion that would take um, you know some thought. Yeah. Can I just weigh in one last uh, uh, my son comment like this is a great um, view of like if I were looking at I am looking at this the, the the where the entrance is it seems like it's it's really shady and dark and I like the corner of the building seems like oh that would be like where I'd want to sit and wait for somebody because it's nice and sunny and it's going to be on a day when it's 40 degrees or 50 degrees you're going to sit out there but I think that it, yeah, I'm assuming you have some circulation issues that you can't address but when i look at from this version it looks like the the nice warm spot where people like to lean up against the building and read a book or something are go is going to be yeah, um, uh, on the where the offices are so, so, so Paul, you're so on, Paul, you're actually asking whether they can move the offices and change the entrance i think is part of where you're going with this or move the entrance more yeah i, I, well, I think I what think the Go Sorry, ahead. I think I think I think this is a, a certain time of day, and so Tim, do you have an I? You know, it depends on the year, time of year, and it depends on the so time of it, day. It's a southern, it's a southern exposure, though, right? It That's is what a, we're looking at. It is a southern exposure um, here. Um, so this is this wall is facing south. Um, during the morning drop off the shadow of the gym here this is this is honestly late afternoon west so the sun is coming from the southwest to give you that so um it, if, if we are getting into the absolute realism of sunlight as you approach this in the morning this would be in shade um so you know how far the shade from the gym comes this direction would depend on the time of day and we, and we can certainly do those studies to illustrate um why the entrance is where it is and it also speaks a lot to how the site works well, most of the traffic is coming from and most of the outdoor use is to the north of the building 
but we will uh, certainly make every effort and and we will ensure that uh, the entrance is comfortable and well lit and then uh, you know these are simply modeled at this point uh, we will get into the, the full extent of the glazing and and how this space will work so so again i think um we will make sure that paul your comment is um very helpful that we either show it mm -hmm. at the same time of day for for all of these but also maybe several times of day so and and identify them right so this is late afternoon um, with the west sun coming down so but in the morning actually the area that you're talking about as tim said is actually going to be in shadow and the sun will be hopefully accentuating um the, the main entrance so what i think what we need to do is just and we've done this before is the sun studies and and walk you through that sean this is just a follow-up on Paul's comment. It seems, to, I'm not an architect, but it seems to me like it, it also might have to do with how low that canopy is over the doors. And if there's a way to have a higher canopy, it maybe makes the entrance feel a little bigger and more open and would allow more sun to hit those doors if that sort of lower canopy was either maybe gone and you could just do an upper canopy or if it was higher up somehow. We will look at that. I mean, there's there's a balance that has to happen between how high canopy is to do what you're talking about. And then there's also if it's above a certain height, it doesn't really work as a canopy anymore because uh -huh. wind driven lane blows beneath it. But it, it, that is all part of what we are considering. Uh, Jonathan. I, I just wanted to to, to uh, maybe explain a little bit of, of what you guys can do to, to kind of help clarify this for us but when you talk about solar studies I, i'm sure you can you can give us a brief sort of animation that instead of moving the building would actually show that that sun path uh, during the course of the day say in september or december or something like that so that we, we would get kind of that the, the, the kind of feel of, of how the the light would play um, we might not do that in, in the earliest stages here, but as we as we refine things more, I, I suspect that's something that you can you can do as a tool for kind of explaining this visually. I, I think actually it is important to do earlier rather than later, Jonathan, because I don't um, we, we want everyone to feel comfortable yeah. with with the direction that we're going. And and Tim, is that something that we can do with just bring not today but because i know we've got other things to do but just using this within archicad to model it at the next meeting or create a movie like you did on this um that is absolutely something that we could do at the next meeting um actually i can do it now do we have time for this i i just want to make sure yeah. we're yeah i'm looking okay. at Maybe we'll just give a preview real quick. Yeah. This will be one solution, but you can see Tim right. manipulating everything. So pick a maybe AM when they arrive. I don't know. This is Tim playing God. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I, I, and, and I'm not, I'm not. So this is 930 and, and the shadows are all optimized to make the light look even. And so you can read the building and we can give you a more accurate representation, but the, you know, after 930, the gym and administration come into shadow. Um, and then in the afternoon, obviously, the entire western side of the building is in light. Um, um, and this is. And it also matters what time of year, too. Absolutely. Right? So. Um, so we can so we can we, we have the ability to answer your questions very specifically. Um, and and we can produce this sort of output for the options and give you the date and time so that it's um, you get a sense of how much light will be on. You know, it's and, and furthermore, at some point you can do these same sort of studies on the interior too, absolutely. Um, because it, we want this both to be welcoming from the outside, but as you walk through those doors, 
we want that to feel welcoming and, and have it be a, a, you know, kind of knitted together, uh, holistically welcoming experience. So, uh, Paul, you want to? Yeah, one, one, yeah, one. So I think that we don't have to do the entire, I think there are two time periods we want to look at, 8, 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. or something like that, just yeah, our heavy traffic times. Forget same. everything else, just look at those two dots and see what it yeah. looks like. Especially as people are arriving, right? What are mm -hmm. they going to see? Yeah. yeah. So, so maybe if if we if we put go to a stopping point right now to make sure we can talk about dates um, and meeting times, um, you know, I, I don't know, Margaret, are you going to be this, this? It's an issue of um, MSBA board dates and March and April affects our timing um, and when we can get what done because of when we have to submit materials. So that's just my overview. Um, and, I, and I'll, I'll take it from there, Kathy. So, um, so there's been a bit of a discussion started between me and Donna um, a few weeks ago when the MSBA published its um, dates for the coming year. So this is, they have um, fixed meeting dates and the fixed meeting dates fix the submission dates. So when we developed the schedule originally, um, we had, there's typically a meeting in March, typically the submission date is six weeks earlier. So we assumed that the submission date for the early March meeting was going to be in mid early to mid January, which would allow everybody to come back from the holidays look at the final submission and take the appropriate votes. As it's happened, they've <laughs> published the dates, but they've moved the submission date or they've published a submission date that is December 28th. And it was Donna's and my take on this that um, that was gonna make it really hard for this committee or frankly, any committee to do what was required. You, you will remember the sort of flurry of activity before the other two submissions where there were documents to review and comment on, there were votes to be taken and discussions. So um, we have suggested to Kathy and we've had an initial conversation with um, that and also involved Paul, Sean and Linda Griesmer. We're recommending to them, and I'm gonna pull up a picture of what this looks like. Um, and thank you, Donna, who created, somebody in your office created this. So um, what we're suggesting is that instead of the March 2nd submission date, that we're going to, um, well, it's a, instead of a December submission date, for a March meeting, there's a March submission for an April meeting. And what it does, I think the first thing that Denisco looked at in reviewing this was uh, clearly we want to keep the end date the same. So the question was, how could you work around this moving? So, you know, here was this, is what would be the submission date at the end of December and then the MSBA vote. Now here is the submission date and here is the vote. So what, what it means for Denisco is that it's going to lengthen their schematic design time and it's going to shorten up their um, design development time, which is actually this red thing. Um, and so the overall design period is essentially the same, but they're spending a little more time on the front end and they are comfortable with this. So, um, you know, we think um, it's a betterment for the process because it will give us more time after the first of the year to have discussion and do community engagement before the submission goes in. But we wanted to bring this to the committee to hear their thoughts about it. And, and do you, um, need us to, uh, um, MSBA needs to know which meeting we're going for. Do you need us to take an official vote that we're changing the schedule, Margaret? No. Donna? They're, not, they're not looking for a vote. It's really more just a, a discussion here. And then I, you know, they, they build their staffing requirements around the dates. So they, they want to know for the purposes of their internal staffing, whether they're going to be reviewing this in January or in March, so I will just send a follow-up. Based on this discussion today, I'll send a follow-up 
email to them confirming that we're revising the date. And if, if we revise the date. And if I could just um, jump on that we feel and you, you are seeing and hearing these discussions and it's, it's important, we feel that it's important instead of trying to rush to a uh, kind of schematic design that we have the opportunity to have these conversations, but also have an outreach to the community to do it um, without being really rushed and- really, or, try, or trying to do it in December. Well, or you can't really do it in December, right? So after Thanksgiving, you're, you're, you lose a lot of um, attention. Yeah. Um, not only from you all, but also from, from the public. And so we just felt we're not losing any ground. There's a little bit of uh, shaving on the construction document side, the red bar. We are 100% comfortable with that. Um, and we feel that having um, the, this is showing 23 months for construction. Now that we have a site and now we know it's gonna be a new building, um, that really doesn't change. And it still gives us ample time to have the students in the new school uh, come September of 2026, because we can, we then have to come back, demolish the building and finish the site. So we think the construction side is, I don't wanna say comfortable, but ex extremely reasonable. And we're confident we can be doing the work that we need to do to get it out to bed. And we just feel it's so important with this community that we give ourselves extra time during this phase. And, and it will help inform the cost estimates as well. This, this will allow us a little more time to define the design for the cost estimates. Yeah, so the other thing is, as they were talking through this, it leaves time, Mike and Ben, if we wanted to have a joint meeting with the school committee, you know, where we're, we've got, this is what the building, some of the decisions, but is, so this community engagement would also be the school committee trying to figure out when we were going to squeeze all of that in, if it all had to happen before December 28th um, was uh, difficult. And, and then the last thing I, I want to say, just for me as chair, I'd like, and I was going to see who else on the committee wants to help me. I wanted to draft some very simple fact sheets, you know, like a, why we need a new building. Um, the, what is, what's the, uh, the net zero, what's this building going to be in terms of energy efficiency and climate so that we'd have something up on our website, but things that people could post on their Facebook or media page, you know, short and, um, it would be good to have some pictures of some decisions about what this shape of the school might look like to be able to put on that. So we weren't looking at a imagine a school. So I just thought it it buys a little time for me um, in terms of my own life um, or working with a couple people, you know, to to think of drafting some of that. Do, so, do we need a was, motion on this, Kathy? So, so Margaret said we don't need a motion. Okay. So if, if the, the strong recommendation is to go to the modified schedule, I guess I just would hear, does anyone have a concern about it? And if not, we will be on the schedule that's the modified schedule. And you will tell us what that means in mm -hmm. terms of our meeting schedule with you. Um, so, so if I can, uh, so the two things I was concerned about, is this going to cost us more money? And the answer from Margaret and Donna were no. Uh, and is this going to delay the the and, I, and the um, occupancy of the building? And the answer from both of them was no. So if, that's, if those are the answers, then I'm really comfortable with this. Does anyone else have a comment or concern, Mike? Yep, just wanted to, um, in the same place as Paul, I am going to have to go in about two minutes. Um, so um, I can stay for this part of it, but then I'm going to have to depart. Um, so um, I think if, uh, if we don't need to vote, we don't need to vote, but I wanted to publicly voice my support um, somewhere to Paul. Okay, so that decision's made. And now I wanted to report on, and Margaret's 
you don't have to show the grid, Margaret, but when we, we, we did the search for a possible alternative day and time, um, every time that was offered, we lost at least three people and sometimes four or five. Um, and we were, unfortunately, they were from the school. You know, it was one or the other of the two principals couldn't make it and or uh, Ben and Rupert couldn't make it or one or the other of them. So we don't have a date. This was uh, Alicia's request that we try to find an alternative uh, meeting date. Mike, you had the Friday slot, the afternoon slot, 1.30 to 3.30, it lost people, but not as many people. I mean, but you had suggested that we think of sometimes we're meeting in the morning and sometimes we're meeting at a different time. So uh, I, I don't know how feasible that is in people's lives. They'd have to remember, oh, it's Friday. So Friday kind of worked for the morning and the afternoon, but we would lose different people. We would lose Alicia on Friday morning, but we would lose um, some others. So I didn't know how to close the loop on this, but that's the report back. It's the Tuesdays and Thursdays, we lose too many people. Um, even if we reconfigure, there's a finance committee meeting and a Jones Library meeting that we had to reconfigure, but we were losing, um, we were losing a principal, Rupert, Ben, and Mike was, um, I can come, but I'll be inconsistent with coming because of what the conflict of what happens after when school lets out. So Phoebe and Angelica, but I know you both were concerned. I mean, this effort to try to find another date, um, you, several of you said all dates work, you know, <clears throat> and, and all dates worked for me. So I think the only <laughs> other way of keeping this um, would be um, on Fridays, and, and I'm not even proposing this because I'm not sure it works, but that, you know, one Friday we'd be meeting in the morning and the next two weeks later we'd be meeting in the afternoon. Um, I know. also think, um, Kathy, it's going to mean that you're going to have to be careful about scheduling for votes. Um, you know, if Alicia wants to participate in a vote, you know, the, that period of time um, where we're, people are looking at commenting and sort of signing off on stuff, that will mean we would have to do more afternoon than morning meetings. So Phoebe, so uh, that's my report on, uh, you couldn't find, we were hoping that we would find something where everyone could do it. Um, and the answer is we lose two to three people um, on all the, all the times, um, sometimes four, yeah, Phoebe. So I was one of the people that was, you know, I can, I can shift my schedule accordingly. So I, I you know, I want to put that out there because um, that's just my own schedule. And I understand that other people have more constraints on their time than I do. Um, there are, to my knowledge, there are other members of this committee that miss quite a few meetings. Um, so I want to put that out there that if we can stretch a little bit and possibly do an, an every other type of situation, I think everything will take some getting used to, but I think that there's um, precedent set to be able to, within this committee, to be able to just understand that, you know, I, I don't know that we have to shift votes, those kinds of things. I mean, I think that if we, if there's something that needs to be voted on, we handle it with the committee that's in front of us at the time that we're supposed to vote. Um, and I think that it's worth thinking about um, if we can go ahead and stretch and do one morning Friday, the next one would be an afternoon Friday. The, you know, I mean, I don't know how other people feel, but that's kind of how in terms of preserving, um, I, I think it's less the person and more what, you know, the, the uh, sort of the position that that person holds in the community being the um, you know, one of the few that have the young kids that are going to immediately be affected by what we're trying to do here. Um, so that's it. Thank you. Angelica. I just want to second that that also that works for me. And, uh, you know, if it's afternoon, a lot of us, uh, you know, are um, after school drop off time, that would be great. It's a, you know, Fridays tends to be flexible and there's precedent for that. 
Um, I also want to throw out, I don't know if this is possible, uh, given whatever open meeting laws we may have, but if there's any votes and flexibility can be built into voting through electronic voting, that might be also another option. Um, but, you know, Qualtrics or something like that. So just to throw that out there. Paul, I don't think we, we can. No, no, yeah, under the public record of open meeting law, you have to be present to vote. And unfortunately, we're not, the state hasn't moved beyond that yet. No, and I just, Angelica, just so on the Friday, the Friday slot, and Margaret, you can look at your grid to make sure I'm remembering yeah. correctly. The Friday slot that lost the fewest number of people was the 1.30 to 3.30. It wasn't the later, the later afternoon. So we had one principal who said she could make it that time slot. <laughs> you know, so it was, a, you know, we, we lost both when we went to the later time because it's it's at when school is dismissed that, that you know so it, and and we lost other people for the late friday so it wasn't the after yeah i th i think the 3 to 5 friday time is really that has seven members of this committee who can't attend the friday 1:30 to 3:30 time has three people which includes rupert paul and one of the principals so um, it would mean the Friday morning, we would have one missing, and the Friday 1.30 meeting, we would have three. Donna, that's, that's as good as it gets. Yeah, I, I think um, I, I just want to point out that once we get past schematic design, uh, we won't be needing to have you know, um, building committee meetings every two weeks. So this is really a uh, kind of a short window in time. And then as the design and, and the project moves forward, we should be meeting once a month. So I, I just wanna make sure people understand that commitment. So I didn't, um, I'm, I'm, I'm worried that we're gonna lose a quorum. So um, Ben, I, I, we didn't reach back to when people voted there, could they make it or not? Um, so are there, People who think the, and and I don't know whether we would have to do every other time we meet on the opposite time, but at least once once every few times to, to vary the time we meet. Um, is there anyone who hates that idea? Maybe that, you know, well, thinks- Well, Kathy, we, we also need to confirm that Alicia can make the Friday 1.30 to 3.30 time because she didn't respond to the poll so no well she gave she gave us those times originally but i will okay. i will I, margaret she said friday she could meet one thirty or later so i also I checked in with her she did not receive the poll oh okay well let me uh, that's okay yeah. thank you but but those were times she originally gave us the three thirty or later in the afternoon. But I would double I I absolutely will double check with her. I mean we're not going to switch it. Yeah. Um, for right now, as you've seen, we kept the eight thirty until we until we decide differently. It's it's our regular time. Any anyone have a uh, Jonathan Ben people who haven't spoken? Simone, I think Simone was one of the people that. Only one one slot worked for her, but Jonathan, I, I, I'm more than willing to be flexible. Um, I think it would be a, a shame <laughs> for the one person who, whose kids will benefit and experience the school who's on the committee to be kind of lost. My kids will all be in middle school and high school by the time this project is finished. Okay, so why don't I I leave it that that. I will double ex double check with Alicia if that works, and then we will uh, work with Margaret and Donna on a. Um, what does that mean? Right now, you all have the meeting slots all the way through December. I think early December, mm -hmm. so we'll just look at what that schedule means. Um, um, Paul is, and you know, we know we're going to be regularly missing some people then. But Paul, does that seem like a reasonable solution to you? Yeah, and I'm. I think Sean and I are both willing to work on, you know, making sure our schedules can accommodate what, our, what the majority of the committee can do. Um, so, yeah. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So that. Um, so I will. I will relay that information back by email, including if we 
come up with a revised schedule and we will post it. So any other comments before I open it up for public comments? So the, Phoebe. Yeah, I just had a um, question. When we were looking at the uh, massings that you guys had done, there were a couple mentions of, um, of the, oh God, now I'm gonna forget the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, of the conversations that had taken place about the outdoor learning, that kind of stuff. I'm wondering um, if that is a conversation at some point that um, comes to the committee or is done somewhere we can hear it. I'm just interested in um, what kinds of things the uh, school system itself, and unfortunately, of course, Mike isn't here at this moment, so I'm, you know, missing my opportunity to say this in front of him, but um, <laughs> what the uh, what we're thinking about in terms of what those spaces will be used for um, and and who we're getting that uh, level of information from. I think that, um, you know, teachers administration is fantastic. I'm wondering if there are any parents also that are involved in that kind of, um, you know, what we're thinking about using them for. Sure, I, I can just um, chime in a little bit. We met with um, several staff, uh, the, uh, the staff that focus on outdoor learning or science engineer, all of that, um, including Mike, Mary Kylie, um, I don't remember if Tammy was there or I know Allison wasn't there, but you met Jennifer too. Wesley. And Jennifer. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they were very helpful and explaining how they currently use the space, what could enhance the programs, um, similar to what Angelica was saying, how much they really use the outdoors now more than they did you know, two years ago. And we absolutely will bring to the committee, uh, it was an initial discussion, we like this, we don't want amphitheaters, we want it to be flexible. So we, we can certainly, uh, and we would, of course, bring it to the committee to show what the plans are for it. Yeah, it's it's really exciting. Um, some of it we have to do anyway because we have to manage stormwater on site. So we're just going to be incorporating some some of the educational curriculum into the site. I I have one more question. Sorry, separate topic. Um, the CPA application that went in um, that we got the email about, but also I think Maria mentioned it at our at last Friday when we were at Fort River. Um, is that something that we um, I know when we had talked about it as a committee, um, there was other documentation that needed to go in. And is that something that we will talk about, something that we will look at um, that we're part of in any way? I, Phoebe, I'll, I'll give you an off the cuff and then I will do more work on this. When when group, anybody, whether it's the town or a resident group applies, the CPA group is going to ask for the recreation department so that it, it, whatever category you apply in, whether it's history or open space or recreation, they ask for that group's view of it you know, and ranking. So some of the information they may need, um, I was getting from Danisco on how much of the field work is not the school, you know, so the, the, the amount of dirt, the drainage. So I have some of that information that Danisco was pulling together for, for this that, so I'll have to um, report back to you because that's the questions that the Community Preservation Act committee will be asking, you know, on what what's the basis for your numbers, uh, what's the justification? And Tim sent me, um, we had seen them, but some pictures of flooded fields. So if you were, if you wanted to know what a a field underwater looked like, here's a picture of it. You know, so you know why we need to do this. So, so but our committee wouldn't be normally asked about it as much as the, the town and these others, and then what else it's competing with. Um, that's the way the review system goes. They need a 
report back from the category. So, you know, conservation or wherever, they would probably even need a wetlands. I don't, I don't know what pieces, but CPA works through that as a process when it comes in a category. So I will try to pull together something that I can report back on. And that goes through all the fall. You know, it doesn't come back as a final decision to the end of the fall. And okay, Kathy, so can I just add quickly? Yeah. There, there will be a public hearing on it as well. So anybody who wants to go and voice support um, for it in front of the CPA committee can. Um, and I think the public hearing sometime in November as well, or maybe early December. Um, but we can share that calendar with this committee in case they want to follow um, along. I think it would be great. I mean, I think if we can get funding elsewhere, that kind of benefits us. Oh. Um, so, you know, if we can... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's all from the taxpayers. Uh, one way or the other, um, CPA is a tax as well, so it's it 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 kind of shifts where it is, but it's you know it's still sort of locally funded. There is some state contribution to that as well, which is good. So yeah, so what I, I'm going to put it open for public comment, but I want everyone to know who didn't raise their hand to be on the what we're calling it, the ad hoc design subcommittee, our working group. Um, we'll, I'm gonna let everyone know about the meeting times. And if you wanna come to it, if it works on your schedule to continue this looking at massing and rotating, um, you're welcome. So we are now open and um, Sean or, or Paul has brought the first person in. Rudy, you are here with us. I think all you need to do is unmute. Talking to me, I disappeared from your. This is Rudy. Yeah, I guess so. Um, You're here. Yep. Great. Thanks so much. Um, just a couple of things. Um, does this shift in the schedule affect the timing of the debt exclusion vote? Do we have hard constraints on that that we have to meet or else like shift a whole six months or something. I don't, I don't remember that. And at some point, if you all can address that uh, or take that into account. Um, it looked like there was an overhang in one of the massing designs, an overhang of the media uh, room over the open space under the, by the cafeteria door. And I don't remember it being that way before. Maybe it was, and I just didn't see it. Um, I thought there were some good points by Rupert and a couple of the architects who joined that overhangs are sometimes problematic from an energy and frozen pipes and others and construction standpoint. Um, so I wonder if we want to rethink that, if that's going to be part. Um, the window box is on the south side of the school. I don't know how many of you have pressed your face to the glass of a window as a kid to see down other lengths of the building or to things that you couldn't see straight out the window. But I think that's a really common thing. And it looks to me like um, boxing the windows that way obstructs those lateral views from the window um, and maybe some light. And I wonder if we want to rethink that. I know these are all tentative things, but um, I, I would be disinclined to put that kind of obstruction on the views from the windows. Uh, and I think. That were my main points. I'm I'm glad you're looking at the CPA application, obviously, and I wonder if maybe there should be some time on your agenda to talk about that a little more in a coming meeting. Thanks. Thank you, Rudy. Chris, you are with us if you unmute. There, that's better. Um, I just want to repeat something which I uh, I submitted a couple of weeks ago uh, in writing. Um, I have been grappling with it personally a, the need to deal with re-roofing underneath um, an array, a solar array of that I own, and um, and it worked out that I mean it seems that it, well here's the deal this is a Kuhn Riddle Architects. We had we built 15 years ago uh, um, a we put up a solar array 15 years ago on a roof that we put down 30 15 years ago. Uh, the, so I've I've been thinking of the solar array as having a kind of a 30 year useful life. Um, the roof though is a membrane roof and it had a 15 year useful life and that has expired and it's leaking. 
Um, and so we had we have to um, remove the array and reinstall it so that it can be re-roofed. And that's very expensive. So it turns out many numbers of thousands of dollars that would will effectively make that solar array uh, non-cost effective. Uh, we would probably, uh, we'll probably decide to just take it off and put the roof on and not put it back on again because the cost to remove and replace is so high. I'm calling that, uh, that, that's my problem. You don't have to worry about it, but it, it is a problem that probably applies to many solar arrays put over membrane roofs in, in all around the world. And um, I wonder how, if, uh, can we, we, are we getting ourselves in that same bind? Is, will it work out that the lifespan of our solar array is uh, really con uh, con determined by the lifespan of the roof underneath it. And um, so I, I wanted to warn the uh, committee about that, that dynamic. And, um, and maybe it does, it might do two things. It might be, uh, uh, it suggests that maybe ground mount solar, it might be more cost effective than roof mounted solar. And it certainly seems like um, that solar on solar on solar on canopies over parking lots will not will not face that problem, and um, and so maybe is there a way to keep all of our solar on the ground or on on parking lots? That's my general anxiety. The the the, the solar collectors put over membrane roofs with short lifespan. That short lifespan tends to uh, uh, tends to make the lifespan of the collectors um, shorter also. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I think I'm next, is that correct? Yes, you are, Bruce. Well, thank you. I, I continue to um, uh, be so grateful to all of you for the work and the design team as well. Just a couple of comments uh, on the uh, 3D models. Um, I agree with uh, the observations on the fourth uh, uh, model that the um, that the slope roof, the combination of the slope and mass uh, slope and flat roofs, has a, I think, a positively interesting effect on the massing. And I think doing that slope roof at the western end, which is the uh, aspect of the building that is, uh, I guess, most prominent and needs to be most prominent, is the best place to put it. So I, I thought that was a very uh, um, that that felt to me like a, a, a good uh, design solution direction uh, because it added, uh, I think, measurably to the interest. And I agree with Mike too about it, uh, emphasizing the uh, and identifying the entry location more effectively. Um, I was less enthusiastic about those uh, big color frames around the windows, not for the same reason as Rudy, but because they just seem so big. Yes, they're introducing color, and I think that's nice and, 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 and vitalizing for an elementary school building. But I think the scale of them um, uh, it, it diminishes the intimacy of the building. So uh, I think the, the way in which color has been interested, for example, in the Maria Hastings School, where it's panels, uh, spandrel panels between windows, or other ways that are uh, uh, equally uh, prominent, but less intimidating in scale, I, I think is a better way to go. That's just my view. Um, and, and I have uh, comments on the CPA, but uh, Kathy, I'll email them directly to you because I, I think it's just more mechanical and I'll uh, share those thoughts with you and you can share them with whomever else you think is relevant. So thank you all very much. Maria. Thank you. I'm going to comment with two hats on. First is uh, as a user um, of the community fields, um, a group of us uh, users met and talked about uh, what would be ideal situations. And I think that the ideas that came out of that were around consolidation. This was a lot of it because of ultimate and their long narrow fields and the fact that they use four of them. Um, we also shared ideas with uh, among the soccer community uh, and for softball. I mean, right now there are three softball fields uh, at the Fort River site. And um, what I would like to share is that I think that there are ways to accommodate all of these interests 
with including that of obviously the 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 kids and the school um uh by using this consolidation and by having a slightly larger north south dimension on that uh on on the fields to the north uh, by shifting things to the south we really much appreciate the opportunity to have a back and forth discussion uh, with designers and with committee members i think that this would this is the kind of thing that uh, is better done in a conversation for example i don't think that the uh, pv panels that are on the parking lot are really so much of uh, a problem uh, for softball they are very far uh, to the side and would be the same no matter where which uh, if, if the infield was in the north or the south of the field um, so uh, if, if we could have some time to talk about this, perhaps at one of the design meetings, that I think would be beneficial to all, I think. <clears throat> um, the other thing I'd like to comment on is uh, as one of the authors of the CPA application, we would very much hope to have the support of the school building committee in our application uh, to try to reduce the overall cost Yes, CPA funds are taxpayer money, but um, uh, as I'm sure Sean knows, we're talking about a debt exclusion override that we can decrease on, and that's going to be direct to taxpayers, and it would relieve their direct burden. So I think that having CPA funding for this portion of the project would be beneficial, and I hope that the committee is also looking at other ways to decrease the debt exclusion override burden with other funding sources. Um, the other thing about the application is that not only is it looking at the fields, but we also applied to have lighting included and a comfort station. And again, a conversation with the designers and the committee would be beneficial to see how we could best accommodate that. And uh, we would appreciate the opportunity to meet with you around those issues. Um, oh, one other thing about the infield. I think this would be a good um, opportunity to, to speak with having somebody from the phys ed department uh, at the schools because that, uh, that infield can be used by the kids as well for kickball, for them to play baseball or softball. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. I think I think that um, that is the number of people for public comments. I don't see any other hands. Thank you, Paul, as co-host, for bringing them in. Um, if there are any other final comments, um, I think not. I, you know, I have received. Bruce did send in. I just got it yesterday, but he sent in some pictures, pretty vibrant pictures of buildings that school buildings and other buildings that use different color bricks to create patterns. Um, and I will be just sending them on to the full committee as, as part of this. Um, and I do, I want to assure everyone if if I get something that just comes directly to me, it goes to designers and it goes to everyone to the extent um, I, I am paying attention to my emails, um, which sometimes I don't. But um, I think that's it. So I want to thank everyone and we will get scheduling out, including next week's Friday meeting of what we're calling the design subcommittee, and it will be another site visit. So um, um, it was really helpful to be able to walk the site last time. Um, and uh, I was corrected by calling them drainage dishes to start calling them swales. Um, but, but, you know, Angelica, even if you wanted to join for part of it, trying to get a visualization of where is this building going to be relative to each of the other pieces, I just thought it was really helpful. And it, we can't easily have our committee meeting be in person because we don't have any viable way of having the public come in. So we don't have a, a the only building we have that can do Zoom meeting and and meet is the town room, you know, so it's set up to be able to 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 do that. So I I think I'm ready to adjourn, but I see Phoebe's hand is up. I just wanted to second what you were just saying, Kathy. I want to encourage anybody 
um, whether it's on the committee or in, in the public who has questions about spacing. Um, it was hugely, hugely helpful for me last week to be able to actually physically see. I think the designs, while beautiful, do no justice to the size of the site. So even for things like how much green space is going to be where, being able to stand there and see, well, this is where the building is. Wow, look at all that space to that side that we have was incredibly helpful in being able to orient myself um, to, to realize how much room we actually have. Um, so I, I would encourage anybody that if we're if we're doing it um, next week to to be present if you can be. So so thank thank you everyone and thank you design team. Um, um, Tim, I know that some of these were videos, so if you can figure out how to send me something to post so that someone who, and I particularly I have as a counselor I have a community event on Sunday. And I'll just grab a couple pictures to say we're, we're starting to look at 3D. So, and you know, even if you just make a, a chart of a few of them to say where we are, we have an ability to start bringing this out just to say we're at an exciting phase. That would be great. Okay, I can do that. And everyone knows, I think, that we post minutes. Um, Margaret is going to, or I will, if you want me to attach the minutes to the file, I will do it for the last few meetings, but otherwise it's always in our packet up on the web. Um, so the the minutes are there. Donna. Yeah, one Kathy, yeah, just, just to the videos. Is it okay just to forward them to um, Angela and she can just include them as part of the minutes? They're like. No, oh, absolutely. Okay. You know, any way, any way to the extent people yeah. want to go back and look at them. You know, I just didn't know, Tim, because you were switching back and forth from what looked like just pure charts to video. So yeah. I don't want to send both. I can I can give you a video and there's um, a slide deck that has the first image of each video. So uh, you yeah, so, choose. So I don't want to put you to a lot of time work. So just whatever is really easy for you would be yeah. great. So thank you. So, so thank you, everyone. And we are adjourned at 10.07, so Paul can run outside. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>